Here's my model. I made it four years ago in my kitchen. It's pretty janky and it never worked particularly well. It was also dangerous with bolts and all sorts of things coming out. And I did fall off it a few times. For this video, I'm going to use two of these together. The idea is it won't fall over and you can sit in the middle and you'll still be able to rotate within the ring. The problem with this monowheel is one I didn't fit in it and the second one, the outer ring had a bit of flex. <coughs> However, for this video, I'm not gonna make the same mistake twice. This is five millimeter thick, 100 millimeters wide, mild steel tube, and it weighs an absolute ton. Have I gone over the top? Yes. Am I scared it's gonna run away with all the inertia? Yes. Is it gonna bend? Absolutely not. And it's filthy as anything. Now a monowheel doesn't work like a conventional bike wheel, as it has no hub or spokes. Instead, it has four rollers on the outside, each connected to bearings in, as you can see here. The frame itself has no moving parts, and it's the outer ring which rotates around it. Now with a die wheel, effectively it's the same principle, except you've got two wheels, two inner frames, all connected together, and you sit in the middle. So here are the rings. No, I'm not making two die wheels. In fact, when they bend them or roll the rings, they can't do it all the way around, otherwise they wouldn't end up flat on the floor. So the next mission is I'm going to have to cut them in half, hopefully perfectly, and then weld them up to make a perfect ring overall. That's the plan. The rings themselves I sourced from a metal maker up in Sheffield in the north of the UK. They did comment on how hard they were to roll, and equally hard to cut for myself. Please, please, for once I measured in my life, I deserve this to work. Oh, yeah, that's not too bad. If I come around here, whoop, it's out. Not huge, but enough. That ain't gonna work, is it? So naturally, I had to come up with a bodge plan on how this was gonna work. You do not want to get your toes run over by the styling. The idea being here that I could get one side straight and weld it together and clamp the other. So here is the setup. As you can see, the gap is miles. I don't even know how, it's got worse. I don't know how, but it's got worse. So I've welded one end and the idea is I'm gonna clamp it together and pray. Please come together. Oh, it's moving. Oh, I'm a genius. I am a genius. I don't know where it's bended. Oh, no. No one near it. Now we had avoided that disaster. All that was left was to weld up the two rings. With that done, it was time for the inner frame. I 3D printed these plates, which I can mark up, and then cut it down. I used 5mm stick feel, way overkill for this job. Spot more welding, and we had our first inner frame. Well, kinda. How have I got that so wrong? It's nowhere near. Not to worry, just measured out a new one and cut it down to size, which fit much better. Now for the second frame, it was much, much easier because all I had to do was just copy the first. I still don't know how they ended up in different sizes though, but here we go. You'd think you'd learn from your first mistakes and do it better second time? No, no, we don't do that here. We have two inner frames and a helper. Yeah, exactly. What's dad making, eh? A tank. Now I wanted the to have suspension for a few reasons. The main one being it allows for adjustments for any mishaps we've had along the way. So I made these H brackets, which allowed the suspension to be connected to the top. I then welded on a little box section, which was the connecting point between the suspension and the frame itself. Alrighty, suspension time. Me. If I remove you first, will you go? Yeah. Oh, it's melting it because it's still hot. So we're getting there, we're getting there. We've got the suspension on. It's uh, 
a bit worrying thinking that all the weight is going to go through this joint here and this rubbish bolt I have going through the middle there. But I'm relatively happy with that. Next thing to do, we're going to put the uh, the next bit of suspension on and then put them inside the wheel and add the rollers. Now for the monowheel, I use PLA 3D printed rollers and they lasted a whole about 10 minutes. For this idea though, I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. I designed them the same way in Fusion 360 and then I uploaded it to JLC 3DP. Now this website's great because you can upload your files and then choose what you want to be printed out of or made out of. You can use nylon, metal, all sorts of stuff. They actually have over 20 different materials to choose from. And once your files are up, it's a 48 hour lead time from door to door. And just like that, a few days later, these nylon SLS printed rollers ended up on my doorstep. One thing I really liked was the instant quoting and I could track the progress all the way. On top of that, there's coupons starting from 30 cents all the way up to $70 for new users. So you can check it out in the description below if you want to get yourself a coupon and something absolutely amazing printed. Now we have the, uh, the sort of rollers from JLC 3DP. It's time to press the bearings in. And I've designed these that just press fit. And the idea is I want to put four in, to be two in the center and one at each end, hopefully to balance out the load a bit. Uh, how am I gonna press these in? Now there is a problem with my own making. 17 mil bearings. Don't ask why I use 17 mil, but here we are. And I want to bought a 17 mil rod. The problem is bearings like slightly smaller or the rod slightly too big, and the problem is it's not gonna go through there. So I'm gonna have to grind this down. Or best way to be in a lathe. Don't have that. I do have a 3D printer and a drill dough. I've got an idea. Time for a Barker Bodge. So here's my homemade lathe. I've got a uh, 3D printed part which I designed and printed my uh, Cruiser Core one and that fits this bar in snugly and basically I've got a cable tie that goes around it put it into the back here oh, all the bearings fell now with the rods complete the bearings complete and the frame and the suspension all connected together, it was time to finally put it in the ring. I bought this plastic bucket seat off Facebook Marketplace and I'm going to have a five point harness in the future. Oh, hey. So we've got our two frames. There's a bit of adjustment required but that's one of the reasons I want suspension on there. So it allows me to sort of tighten one side or radio side so we get a nice even-ish ride. A uh, bit, bit of room in here, don't be too close to the outer wheels because it's where you lose fingers and stuff like that, I and mean, we don't want that. So I need to weld up this bottom brackets and I'll put one across the top as well. We always want more weight down low than up top because anything up top is going to want to rotate down to the bottom to keep the centre of gravity low. One of the things I didn't do in my previous monowheel. Then it'll be time to try and get this inside both rings and we're going to have nearly a fully functional dial. Just then have to add the top two rollers, which I'll do once it's in. Therefore, I can lock it in place and hopefully it doesn't pop out. Good. Time for some more questionable welding, but now the frame was fully connected together. Heavy is this? Oh! Jeepers. That is like, uh, That is heavy. I'm not a particularly strong guy, but that is heavy. It has wheels. Oh, yes! Yes, that's so much easier. Choo -choo. Oh. Right, let's get the wheels in the frame, or the frame in the wheels. Whatever way you look at it. They weigh about 60 kilos each. And all by myself. That's <laughs> in. This isn't the position to be in. If this does go in, I get squished. Um. <laughs> Help. Come on, please, 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 please. Oh. 
Oh, 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 yes. Now, in order to be able to mount the top rollers, I had to preload the suspension. I accomplished this by using a ratchet strap. Why is it when anything under tension just gets a little bit scary? So I in place the bearing and the other C bracket, and it was just time to release the tension and lock everything in place. I have got some spaces that I'm 3D printing, which will add to the bolt across. And after all that effort getting it together, we have to take it apart to get the spaces in. There's a couple bolts which um, quite run through straight. Add a cross beam across here, stopping of that motion, and hopefully it'll be a bit more square then and roll better. And also, while I'm at it, the rings will be off, and I'll um, I'll grind down and fully weld up these rings. Let's get to it. I've been using my grinder to hide the evidence of my welding, and hopefully it's a lot smoother for the bearings to roll across. As I mentioned, each bolt's going to have a 3D printer spacer, which will hopefully keep everything a bit more rigid. Since I bought this seat, it's full of water still. Can't get out. Got an idea. Yeah. With everything complete, it was time to put it together again. So that's it for part one of this video. I've still got a couple more things I need to do in the sort of making of it, which is going to be add a top brace here behind me and connect the seat because it's not actually connected yet. I want to know where the batteries are going to go, the motors are going to go, and it saves me doing extra work, which isn't necessary just now. But still, I have a fancy seat. It does roll within the rings acceptable. It could do a bit of smoothing up, which I'm going to have to play around with the suspension and check it's all getting side loaded anywhere like that. Please subscribe, because I'm sure you want to see what happens in the next one when I start to actually ride this thing around with about 60 kilowatts of power. And thanks very much for liking the video. See you in the next one.